that was a that was a pretty big uh, that was a pretty big introduction there. Are you are you with me, Mike? <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, you hear me. <laughs> Holy yes. moly! There's been yes. so much preamble. I'm exhausted already. No, that's um that's that's only a, a, a mere snippet of the um of the big day out sort of experience. You know, like I was lucky enough to do the um to do the the breakfast show for you know, on the on on the day for you know quite a few of those as well. And that, that was a whole different thing altogether because you're basically trying to talk up this amazing gig, which you know is going to be an amazing gig, but there's no one in the whole stadium. Not a soul to be seen. And so you're just going to, it's, it's like imagination radio. Right? Yeah, it, was, it was really cool. Yeah, right. Hi, anyway. Hi, hi, hi. Hey, hi. How, how are you, Mikey? How are you doing? Oh, very well, very well. You know, like, yeah, likewise. like all New Zealanders, like, look, like, yeah, got, was a little jumpy there for a wee bit, but I'm all right now. Good. Yeah, <laughs> a little jumpy, but ho- holding it together. And yeah, we've had our challenges, haven't we? Hey, but but the music is still with us. And I have to say, yeah. uh, without wanting to sound yeah. like a, like a fangirl, but I mean that song. You know, just hearing "Trippin' Again," it just takes me right back and to blatting around in a car and cranking that up full bore. I mean, you guys delivered some some great stuff, and you must have had so much fun. Yeah, well, I mean, it's fun. Like it's it's. Being where I am now, you know, like the we, we, the, the song itself was such a was such a sort of unexpected massive hit that it was that that we just sort of rode this wave and then and you, it's sort of a lot of stuff I guess not past the spot because I'm really grateful and appreciative of everything that happened because of it you know and because of and, and the, it put us in a space where we could suddenly continue working really hard and. And keep doing that as a like a careerish sort of thing for a couple of years, you know. And you, and, um, you were youngins, weren't you? You were pretty young when you started on the North Shore. Yeah, well, well we started, but we started. We won the Shazam video contest. When we were fifteen and sixteen, I think, was collectively, which was uh, you remember Shazam, the, the TV show. Yeah, I do with Phil Schofield. Yeah, was it? yeah, yeah. Yeah, we, we, <laughs> yeah they, they, so they had they had like a school sort of um. um like a, like a video, just because videos were this new thing, videos, you know, fans made videos for songs. And so they had the, they had the uh, Shazam video contest, so we won that one year. And um, and that's when we started really getting serious and started really, like, practicing twice a week and non-stop for about another 10 years. <laughs> but it was, it was cool. It was, it was, it was, I look back and it was such fond, such fond memories. And so, you know, like, um, especially with the benefit of hindsight, you've got a couple of decades, a couple of decades, you say, um, you know, to sort of think about it, and you suddenly realise, and suddenly, and you meet people, and you suddenly realise that it really it wasn't just special for us in the band. It was really special for a lot of people. It really marked a point in their lives that they really were really enjoying, and that they look back on now with a lot of love. You know, which is really cool that to be the marker, to yes. be the, you know, the, the sort of the the flag that's flying for that part of your life. It's really, it's really quite. Humbling and and excellent. Yeah, so it's, yeah, that funny old song that we just that we just knocked out. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that time, you know. And, and, and like I said, you always bring the energy. Like, there's always a great, like, even looking at your photos, like, and just and just your your time on radio, which has been substantial, and the listeners love you. I mean, you can hear it in their voices in that clip, you know, ju- just now. And and they're all they're kind of like they were like your disciples. And but I, I want to know how how did you kind of switch from um, from like the push push? So so you had this, you know, you started out music was was it, and you were you were going hard, and then you got into broadcasting. How did the BFM thing all come about? Out. So, um, we, like, if you'd asked me in push push, like, for some, like, people had said to me before in the past, oh, you'd be quite good on radio or TV, and I just had no interest in TV, I had a little bit of interest in, but radio, I had no interest at all because traveling around the country and meeting most of the people that worked in radio, most of them were dicks. <laughs> <laughs> to be honest. Oh, what are like, you talking oh, about, mate? Oh, right. oh, I take that, I take that personally. I'm, I'm just kidding. I'm just calling it as I see it. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. But back in the back, back in those days, anyway, you know, it was just like uh, it was kind of, it was kind of, wasn't a lot of fun going around visiting radio and that sort of thing. Uh, yeah, there was the odd, the odd exception, obviously, but um, and but and I never really got why it was like as a medium why it was interesting, you know. And then um, we were doing a, a gig in Auckland, the push push gig in Auckland, mm. and the thing is, we had BFM, which is ninety five BFM student station up in Auckland. Um, one of their policies is that if you put the ads on the station, they make the ads, you know? Mm. So, um, 
and you know, so the ads will sound a little bit different yeah. to, to everyone else's. And um, so I went up there to kind of make the ads for this gig, and I just loved, just loved it. I mean, just like, just like, well, this is really good. All the, all the music I was into, all the sort of, yeah, just the, the vibe, a, a sympathetic feeling, yeah, some, yeah, sympathetic vibe. Mm. And it just, and I, there were a few people that were up there that I knew already, and a few that I didn't, and, and I got to know them. And just, I don't know, just, and it just was, became somewhere I just really enjoyed going to hang out, and then. And the idea of being able to do the radio that you wanted to do, just come up with an idea and do it, was really cool. Oh, that's, and when I started, right. when I started right. sort of dabbling in that, that's when it got really, that's when it became, I became totally addicted to it. <laughs> yeah, you know? and I think radio, <laughs> radio is like that, isn't it? It's just, uh, that's what happened for me. You know, as a young kid, 16, I was like, I, I want to work here. This place looks fun. <laughs> well, it's still, it's, and it's still, um, you know, it's, Without wanting to sound like I'm a, an old traditionalist hanging on to it, it, it still has does something that no other medium can do, which is, yeah, you can get on a Friday afternoon five thousand people all doing something completely and utterly different. None of them know each other. No one's got anything to do with anyone else in the city, sort of thing. And everyone's off doing their own, got their own, own sort of mission on. But you can all be in the same headspace at the same time. Right. And yeah. There's yeah. No, and there's and there's no other um, no other medium does that. You know, the TV has to sit there and look at it. TV has to sit there and look at it. And TV is all planned out beforehand. You know, there's very little live TV now. Yeah. You know, so mm. TV and even along the, and 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 the internet stuff. So it's all it's all presented as they as you know um, as whoever the pro is producing it wants you to see it. You know, and be that creatively or advertising, whatever that sort of thing. But whereas radio is it's it's there and it's 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 still right then, right now, and not before and not after, but just now. It's just present. It's really cool. I think it's so cool. Yeah, I, and I agree. Out, and, you, and you play with people's imaginations as well. You play, you, know, you, you you paint a picture in people's heads of stuff, and you can have so much fun with that. Yeah, you know? and, and I think that's what I think that's really missing in radio at the moment. But. Yeah. <laughs> Gee, I don't. I can't. I can't Robert, think why. Robert radio guy. There's a double radio guy. But yeah. I can't think why on earth you'd you'd think that right now. Have I really can't? No. It is. It is a shame, and it's um. I I miss that. I I hate the way that everything's so sanitised and everyone plays the same stuff, and it does my head. And and I'm totally with you on on that front. And yeah, I I 100% agree. And I just think people miss the likes of yourself on on air. Personally, I do because. Because it was because you never knew what you were going to get, and unfortunately, these days everything is super boring, pretty much. Well, I, I, I mean, you know, try to pull myself as far out of the equation as I can to be, you know, just kind of, you know, keep it nice to, to be fair. <laughs> the, um, I, I also think that you know the best stuff that ever happens is when people take take a bit of risk, or they they, they sort of push themselves out, put, you know. They have an idea and they just run with it, even though it might not necessarily be the safest thing in the whole of the world. But that seems to be all the really good stuff comes from those sort of... That's right. Things, you know and, what I mean? It's you know, like it, yeah. it, it doesn't come, the, the really good stuff doesn't come from just just safely sitting and doing what you did last week, ever. <laughs> no, never. It's really, really boring. <laughs> That's right. And, and at BFM, you know, I mean, you were credited with making some of the most creative radio of, of well, we, well, of the year. Well, that would have been when we're talking like, um, what, what did we, I'm just trying to think. You were there for a long time at B, weren't you? How many years? I was at the, I was at the student radio station for, I think it was 25 years. Amazing. Yeah, yeah, fantastic. And, and, and I did four, four years on Radio Haraki as well, sort of a little gap there towards the end. Mm. And the Har and the Haraki days, they would have they would would have been good too, but obviously incredibly different, like working under a more controlled, <laughs> shall we say, environment rather than perhaps being a bit more anarchic in the student field. Well, yeah, I guess I and um, you know, I look, like it wasn't lost on me the fact that it was commercial radio as soon as I went there, but it's, um, but. I still think there's also a lot of stuff you can do with commercial. I think commercial radio is the worst as, as far as um, as, as, as far as playing it safe and just sitting in the corner clutching your pearls, going ooh. <laughs> like, um, but you you didn't play yeah, it safe like, on Haraki. Like you you actually had quite a lot of freedom there, didn't you? To you know to do yeah, to yeah, do yeah, your yeah, thing. I did for a while, for a while I did, yeah, for a while I did, and um and and you know I really appreciated that, and, I, and hopefully it, it delivered a good you know sort of listeners wise that it was supposed to, and I, th I think it did, and it was, um, 
and it was it was cool. People were talk, people were talking, you know, that radio. Um, yeah, you know, like I'm not not Ray on but at the time when I joined the um, staff there, it was a pretty. It wasn't a lot going on. There wasn't a lot of wind in the sails of the old pirate ship, and but um. Yeah, we we managed to get we managed to make it a thing that we wanted to turn on every night again, and that was I was really proud of that. Mm. And um and then but that sort of stationed itself up again. I don't know. It's, it's, like I say, it's, it's problems with with radio stations that normally own them yourself. So <laughs> <laughs> it's not really, not really your call. You know? Yeah, you know, <laughs> like yeah. most jobs, I suppose. Like working like most people that work for people. Yeah. Now there's a thought, have I? Well, that's what you need to set up your own radio station. Be, become a manager, like middle management. Like, yeah, maybe. I, I, yeah, um, maybe. That's not, not something I've, I've definitely tossed the idea around. I've definitely think of 50 people I can put on it straight away and make it amazing. Um, yeah, I think, and I think there's some, some pretty serious gaps in the market at the moment. Uh, yeah. But, yeah it's, a, it's, an, it's an idea. It's an idea. And it was <laughs> a, um, yeah. I, I, don't know if, I don't know if I'd be the best person to run a radio station. Oh no! You get radio yeah. <laughs> you you just have all control. No, what I'm saying is, it's your station, and and it's you. Like I, it's like I like Holly of the Looney, but I don't think I should run a Holly of the Looney company. You know. <laughs> hey, so, so Mike, like you've got you do you do tons of things. Like um, at the moment, are you like I see that you know you've emceed things, you've been on telly, you've done loads of shows. Are you are you doing um any of that at the moment? Um, or are you more I, caught up with family uh, issues right now? Yeah, the last couple of years, especially, I've been um, like from when I finished up on BFM last. Um, I sort of, you know, gave, we had a little bit of time, and then suddenly we we're into lockdown, and um, everybody was jobless. And it, was, <laughs> it was kind of somehow a little bit reassuring to me, actually. Yeah. I went through a wee bit of a panic. I went into, I was starting to go into a wee, wee bit of a panicky spin there about going, Jesus, what am I going to do here? I think just thought, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. Um, but then everybody was having drama sets. So, but also, but my, um, you know, it's me that I've been able to spend a lot more time with my son, who is um, autistic. Mm. And, un- you know, it's given me time to sort of get my head around that because that's a really unusual, mysterious, challenging, weird thing to suddenly be confronted with. And, mm. Um, mm. and so he and I are at great moments, and he's really cool and he's loving every day, and it's really great, so that's... You know, it's, He's got a I beautiful like, name, hasn't he? Uh, can you tell us it's Ky- Ky- Kyrus? Well, I don't know if it's... Uh, if you say beautiful, it's Kyrus. K-Y-U-S. Kyrus. It's named yeah. after a very heavy, heavy metal band. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, it, it's a it's a yeah. distinctive, interesting name, and why wouldn't you? I mean, that, well, that that's you. Well, and also, when you get to, um, when you get to sort of, like, I, I thought I'd get in the early in the end, I have a child of 46, and... Um, and when you get to that age, you suddenly realise how many people you've got grudges against <laughs> when you're trying to come up with a name. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like how many, just how many people in the world you go, oh, I'm never going to come up with that. Oh, oh no, there's no way. So we, kept, but we both liked Kai straight away. Uh, his mum and I both liked Kai. And then we tried to figure out where it came from. And I only think the band even know where they got the name from. Mm. Like, there's, the, the closest they've got is like it might be a character from Dungeons and Dragons. It's probably like the 7,638 most popular name in the US last year. Right, okay. According to an app that I've got that does that. <laughs> well, I heard recently a woman... I've been spending my time. I've been spending my time and just on apps. <laughs> <laughs> looking at, looking at yeah, unusual names. Like that. Yeah. Did you hear about the mum recently? I think she called her boy Slayer. And, uh, uh, yeah, there's a, there's a, there's a bit of a tradition. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. No, it happens. So, so Mike, you know, yeah. with with it's it's he's quite young, isn't he? So that must be. I mean, all, all jokes as, all jokes aside, what what a challenging life for that little boy. I mean, I guess it's brought you close together, but it must have been a hard. You know, it must be a hard road at times. He's he's autistic. Well, he's, he's also he's, he's uh, what they uh, yeah, diagnosed as nonverbal, which means he doesn't speak. You know, um, wow. well, he speaks, but he doesn't. He doesn't. He doesn't sort of he's got no hold on language or anything like that. At this stage. Mm. Um, which, which hopefully will change, and you know, um, but it's uh, it's initially it was the um, you know the first course, the first seminar that we went to about parenting autistic children. Um, as Norma and I went to, who I who I met when I was on the radio, mm. um, and she's also involved in radio. The first thing I said on the first day is like, number one thing, don't blabber at your kids. It was like, oh, wicked. <laughs> that's my that was my whole plan. <laughs> it was my whole plan. I have a child, and I could just go. Oh, blah, 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 blah. 
that's how, you know, but that's, um, yeah. That's yeah. not the way it works. That's not the way it works. So you've had life. you've had to that's relearn. <laughs> you've had to kind of relearn how to how to live and and how to project yourself. So like, would he um like oh, every day, every day? Yeah, yeah right. Every day. How hard's that? Um, I, I, I mean it's hard, but it's, I, I kind of look at it now and go, what did you think it was just going to be a walk in the park from here on, Mike? <laughs> yeah, like life's hard. Life's 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 challenging. If it's, you don't have challenges today. Have anywhere to go, you know? It's like, um, you know, like I, it, it's almost, uh, of course, it's challenging. Of course, this is the situation I'm in, and of course, that's just, uh, I don't, you know, I don't feel like um, it's in any way. I don't know, it just, it just it sort of just feels like that's the way it was supposed to go. You way just way accept out. it, yeah. And, and, and this, this really was, it was really hard. It was really hard to just. Get your head around it and go. Well, wow. like, um, I, like I had real difficulty with the whole concept, but I might never have a conversation with my son. That was really freaked me out, and I was really upset about that. And um, but I'm okay with it now. It's like, um, and because we have great hours and hours of conversations, but just in our own special sort of way, you know. And um, and I oh, don't know. It's, you just learn. You learn a lot about yourself. You learn a lot about um, you know, one thing. One thing that uh, I've learned about autistic. Children, is it? They don't really have a lot of time for what you've got going on. They're not, really, like, they're not, not yeah. frankly, not that interested in what you're doing. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and you can you can try and t- you, can, you can try and talk up what you're doing and make it look like it's really important. And they're like, really? Okay, cool. That's cool, but that's not what I want to do today. I'm doing this. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Which which it goes against completely goes against. I think even things put there, you know, benefits too. Like I've I'm been a toy collector, like like kids' toys for the whole of my life. I thought when I had a son, oh, that's that. that. And then another two years, all those will be broken and gone. And, and he barely, he barely interested in any of them. Yeah, right. <laughs> he couldn't give a thought. He's, he's got his own things that he does. You know, own so things going on. Yeah, yeah. Does yeah. he? Does he love? Yeah. Does he love music, Mike? Um, it's kind of hard to tell at this stage. Um, mm. There's definitely something about music that, that gets him, but you know, I, I don't want to sort of. Yeah, like, like it's, it's sort of one way of, I guess to describe it is like he's the most beautiful little kid. He's such a cool dude, and um, and he's happy and, and you know he's no trouble that sort of thing. Um, but he's like he's got thirty six pages open on his desktop the whole time. Okay, the whole time. Mm-hmm. Every waking moment, he's got thirty six other projects on the go, and you've got to come in with your one and try and get it in there. Yeah, do you know what I mean? Wow, yeah. <laughs> I wonder if there's people listening, hey, who who can kind of... Because I don't think until you go there, I don't think anyone can understand what that's like and also what it's like for him. I mean, it's cool that he's happy, but that's pretty challenging. I, I totally hear you that he's got so much going on. Yeah, and how do yeah, you the, the, the relate? The overload thing is, is, a, is, a, is a really interesting thing to sort of begin to understand, you know? Like, just uh, when you start to realise that when things are coming in, they're coming in full speed, non-stop, <laughs> from every angle to him, you know, he, 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 mm. he has a build up, he has able to sort of filter it through, that sort of thing. Mm. But, um, and I'm sure there are people out there listening who, who you know exactly what I'm talking about. <laughs> mm. Yeah, that's right. So, well, good on it's you. Pretty, it's, it's, it's quite mysterious. It's still, you know, I mean, it's, I've found kind of, um, the more that I sort of learn about it, uh, People that are on the spectrum, the, the, the less I think there's anybody in the world that's a special that, that is an expert on it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like you'll never probably find out, you know, uh, why or, or where they're at. But you just you just do the best for him that you can. Well, I, I guess it's, it's just um, look at uh, you have to I have to look at it. You know, I, I, I worked out pretty early on that. Now. If it was back when I was his age. Back when I was at school, mm-hmm. you'd pretty much just be called stupid or slow, mm. you know, and that'd be it. And that's pretty much what that's how you that's your that, where your future will be mapped out. And, you know, and the one one good thing is there's a lot of resources out there. There's loads of people who can, can help. There's lots of you know um, uh, information networks and that sort of stuff, uh, and and people working and trying to make it make you know these these beautiful people, you know, their, their time, their day-to-day life as, um, as sort of unchallenging as possible, you know, because mm. while it is challenging for them, you know, they, they deserve to have a life like everyone else and, and, and 
and sort of a flourish as well, you know. That, totally. So it's, it's, yeah, so, so if you can sort of just, you know, if you can just feed, feed all his, um, his, his needs and his, his do everything you're supposed to do and see what comes out of the other end, that's what I'm, I'm happy with that. You know? Yeah, well, good on you. And, you know, there's something amazing about being a dad. I and still love him more than anything yeah. in my whole life. <laughs> <laughs> hey, let's, let's get back to Push Push, because um, cause you guys, yeah. well, only five years ago or thereabouts, you you released an EP. And Leanne, I, Leanne, we, Leanne, we at one stage, we had not even been in the same room together for 20 years. It's bonkers. And I've got a song lined up. <laughs> I've got a song lined up that I want to play because um, otherwise we're in danger of talking for three hours and not playing any music. But um, And this one's called Change. So you, you're pretty proud of this, aren't you? Oh, no. Well, this is, this is um, we, run, we toured with the band, English band called The Darkness. Well, yeah. Um, uh, in 2017. And that was sort of like we had got back together, you know, we all sort of found each other again and got over all of our issues with each other and, and started practicing and just, and had was so much fun doing it that we were like, well, let me go, and then someone suggested that we should jump on this tour, and so there's only three three dates, and so we, well, okay, okay, well, maybe we should release something before the tour, and so we managed to um, release an EP called Talk To Me before the tour, which was made up of songs that we started writing Back when we were like 21, after we released our first album, The Trillion Shades of Happy, we were just, and we were thinking about, okay, album number two, but then sort of, then issues that got on the way, and the band sort of like, mm. went our separate ways, you know? Mm-hmm. Mm. And um, so, so then, you know, to find these songs and go, hey, these songs actually still sound pretty good. And, um, and these songs still sound pretty good. And then and then we um, and we sort of just rejigged them and... and and recorded, re-recorded them and put me on the EP and, and this one particularly, I, this one just particularly tickles all my fancies. Oh right, I well let, let's tickle, it. let's tickle your fancies now then, eh? <laughs> this is this is change. Yeah. Hold on, Mike, we'll be back. Uh, which uh, was released in 2017. That was change. It was 2017, wasn't it, Mike? Yep, 2017, and there was a, um, but there were all songs that would have been on our second album. So that was so we wrote those when we were like 21. Yeah, right. <laughs> so it's still hot, that's pretty it's quite weird. It's quite weird when we did that tour because you're at, I suddenly realised sort of halfway through the first gig, it was like, uh, "Wow, I'm up here singing. I'm singing about things that I was thinking about when I was like 19, 18, 19, 20, and I'm up here, you know, in my sort of late forties, singing about them." And sort yeah, of right. Old story. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't really prepared for that, but um, yeah, oh, <laughs> obviously a lot of water under the bridge, you know, in those 20 years, but, but I guess you deliver it in, in a different style, don't you? You can hear that in, in your voice, too. Yeah, well, we actually, we were supposed to open for Kiss uh, at the end of 2018, maybe? Uh, 2019? No, 2020, perhaps. Um, yeah, the Christmas before the, the lock, first lockdown, <laughs> if that makes sense, and it was Kiss's big sort of that's right. right. Yeah, the, the, last, the last shows that we were going to do, and they they cancelled the um, the the Australian New Zealand league sort of a week and a half out. I was like, oh, it was, and we were sounding awesome. Because, uh, because the, the thing is that half the our guitarist, half the band living over in Australia with with good solid, you know, three children families each. That's right. So we have to, so we have to sort of um, sort of figure out a way to. to practice and stuff like that and, and get ourselves up to speed and we were actually saying great we sounded really good and I was really bummed out about that that was I remember that I was I was going to go to one of those shows in Christchurch I think and it was a real shame uh, yeah damn that damn that thing for happening you know do you think there's a chance that um, you could uh, do another tour or at least play a couple of gigs and or is everyone too scattered um, we're still pretty scattered but we yeah like um, we've, we've got like a sort of we've got sort of um Oh, a stand in sounds like a pretty. That's a, that doesn't actually sound sort of a. We've got a, we've got sort of a uh, understudy guitarist <laughs> that that, that, um, that we sort of have got uh, that, that you know we jam with over here and and then you know sort of it's uh, yeah and they can fill in the gaps and so that's so it's not the original band but it's, it's, it's um it's pretty close you know and then the the original band guys. Can, if it's, Say if it was say if we were going to have a kiss again or something or something like that was going to happen, then they'd come. They, you know, they they fly. Like we we've been over to to Sydney for a few practices, and you just try and squeeze as much as you can and sort of right on either side. You know, it's um, it's, it's fun. It's really cool fun, and it's fun that we all still care. It's fun that people even want to see us play. 
we're, yeah. we're, we've got someone that wants us wants to do a tour with us at the moment. We've got some, like wants to tour us around a couple of cities at the moment. We've got um, and so it's definitely, I, I I can't see us not doing at least one more sort of little just dance around a few places. Of course. Oh well, that's good news. Hey, let's go. Let's go back to Squid Bar days. Let's go back to your you know your house DJ days. I mean, Mike, you've done so many things. Oh, oh, you oh. know. Do you oh, have? Yeah. Let me tell you, let let's me go tell back. You, my, uh, my, my club DJing is actually the best it's been in years at the moment. Really? <laughs> so, so, yeah, 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 totally. So, so, I've had, like, so this end of lockdown has been great. It's a, re- it's a really good gig, actually. Oh, and that's I've good. Playing, I've been, I really enjoyed playing like 50th and 60th. <laughs> that's like a really, that's like a really just trying to pull myself up. But it's, but it's actually really great fun. Really great fun. Hey, you've just given me a great idea for a significant birthday of mine, actually, so I might just lock that one away for the time being. But it's good that you're DJing. I'm happy to hear it. But, <laughs> hey, do you... <laughs> yeah, my, when, when I turn 30, mate, I'll be calling you. Hey, listen, do, do, you have good, do you have good memories, though, of those days? Because, I mean, you, um, there's some funny, <laughs> funny stories you tell <laughs> of people that you mixed with in those times, big names, you know, like um, Darcy from the Pumpkins and Chris Cornell talked to you. I mean, God... You mixed with a lot of big names, uh-huh. didn't you? Yeah, yeah. Chris Grinnell uh, thought I was a dick because so I was playing disco. Um, Darcy from the Pumpkins. Da- why, why did you mention Darcy? Darcy from the Pumpkins who walked out of my bar. I walked past her and she goes, oh, what a jump. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh, okay. Oh, I can't really argue with this. I'm you know, just over it. But I'm like, yeah, no, I've, like, I've, I've been so... I've, every, I mean, I'm really, really, really... 100 percent truly so grateful for the things that I've had the um, had the privilege of being able to be involved in and or you know people I've met people I've interviewed um, I've interviewed almost every single person in the world that I've ever interviewed and um, you know I, I and I like the interviews I've done with them I think they sound like anyone else's I think it, you know um, I, I think I, I know it's just I'm just that, this is where, this is sort of where I'm at at the moment I'm just being a little bit, I find it a little bit hard to find something that's in any way near as satisfying as the, the sort of the work that I've been doing up till now, you know? And, um, mm. which, and, and yeah, I just, but I can't, I'm really, I'm really genuinely grateful for it. I just, I just think, and I have been ever since day one, I was just going, wow, this is, this is something that you can't, you can't, this is pretty neat what's going on here. <laughs> yeah. And there's, some, there's some moments, and, and, there's, there's, and when we say there's good, good memories, it's nothing, it's pretty much nothing but good memories. It's really, that which I'm really grateful for as well, you know? So, um, you know, there's, I, I, as far as, as I said, you know, you've got DJing and stuff before and, and being in a band and all that sort of stuff and my involvement in, I guess, music, it's been, uh, you know, to go from being in a heavy metal band to being, um, to, to being at a, running a bar, to be DJing on the radio, to be DJing at clubs, to be, you know, like, mm. well, it's just, it's just so, you know, it's so, it's so, I'm so grateful for it. Yeah, and, nice, and nice. So, what, what, is, what an interest for, for whatever, however I would, however you would describe the role that I have or the job that I do, whatever. Um, so to be able to do that in this particular period in New Zealand's history, musically, is pretty special as well because it's been a really interesting, and um, yeah, the, the, the time that I've been sort of involved in it has been particularly, yeah, we, mm. we, we mentioned at the beginning, you mentioned, say, the big day out. Mm. There was no such there was no such thing as that. We, don't, we, you know, now we just take it for granted. Oh, big day out, yeah. But man, that was just a, that was like a, a dream, you know, like, did that really happen after the first one? I was like, did that really happen? Did all those really cool bands that we only just barely knew about all just come to New Zealand just then? I know, wow. it was yeah. crazy. Yeah, all, all in one hit. What about that story with, um, you you know, one of your biggest idols, Perry Farrell. I love the story about porno for pyros, you know, and you ended up on stage with them in 1996. What a mind-blowing experience that would have been. I about that. <laughs> it was, it was totally, I mean, I just, yeah, I just really don't know what to make of it. it was like, so, all I, well, I, I can't play any instrument. I can sing and I can play the didgeridoo. I thought that's how, how to play the didgeridoo pretty well, you know? And, um, and so then, <laughs> Doug Hood just oh, hey, you want to play just do with Port of Fires? It's like, what's happening today? <laughs> what? Yes. That, that is just priceless, isn't it? And you did. It's like, it's like, it's like hanging out, you know, sort of in a, in a flat behind my bar with Jeff Buckley one night. Yeah, you know, just like, things like, just wow. Yeah, just, I'm just, 
Yeah, and, and getting to meet, getting to meet all these amazing people and all these, just these geniuses and all these idiots. <laughs> it's, just, it's, it's great. It's such a, it's such a, there's so much to see and talk about and be, get involved in the world that it's, um, I'm, I'm, I'm totally lucky to have been able to do it. Yeah, and I, and I like to think that hopefully, you know, I'm very conscious of the fact that, that with me enjoying myself doing it, that I get across vicariously to anyone else that wants to sort of enjoy it jump in and enjoy it at the same time through me, hopefully. That's right. If that makes sense. <laughs> it totally yeah. does. We're talking to Mike Havoc, and I think it's time we should play another of those newer Push Push songs. So we've got Talk To Me lined up, Mike. So uh, let's check this one out. That totally rocks. Mike Havoc, what a song. Oh, thank you. Thank you. I love it. Thank you. I love, 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 love it. I hadn't heard that before. Hey, your pipes are in good nick. Your vo- vocal's amazing. Um, yeah, it turns, it turns out it's the best better than they've ever been, to be honest. Which is um, cool. I, I, I actually love singing. I think it's, and it's, and it's, that's the one thing that was really um, over lockdown. So like we're trying to sneak in these little band practices, sort of, you know, like sneaky band practices in a garage somewhere. So we could um, <laughs> just, you know, with, with the we could have a jam. But um, because it was, I was really missing, I really missing the spiritual mm. esotericness of being able to make that much noise out of this big bag of blood that we are. <laughs> <laughs> big bag of blood. Had. This is something that over the, especially, um, you know, the last sort of 10 years or so, really, it's really sort, of, really sort of spins me out as a whole. Yeah, we're just a big, we're just a big thing. Of, we're just like a big bit of meat. Amoeba. And it happens, well, yeah, but how, how these, the, the noises that we can get out of it, you know, like, like an opera singer or a, um, you know, like, the noise that you can generate from that particular big bag of blood or meat or, or whatever it is, you know, is actually quite astounding. And you can sometimes when we were in, when we used to tour, when we were touring around Australia, for, you know, we were there for about nine months or something, just touring also Sometimes we do three gigs a night, like because we were we we're, were dedicated, you know. And then, um, but we would, um, you know, like you do the first one, your voice would be a bit knackered. Second one, your voice would be completely knackered. And the third one, suddenly your voice would come back, and you go, "Where is this coming from?" Right. Where must somebody in the sun come? It's it's uh, come from some I've deep part, really, part inside yourself. Really yeah, and I've, and that whole side of music I'm finding really really blows me away. Mm. You've always, I mean, uh, uh, we don't even know what notes are right, what notes are wrong. How do we know that? How, how the hell do we know that? How, how did you how did you perfect that scream in your early days? You know, you had you had the real hair metal metal yell, didn't you? You seemed to do it effortlessly. Was it was it hard to get those high notes? Because it didn't seem like it was. Um, it was harder then than it is now. It, it, okay, it wasn't sort of um, like when we recorded it, I suppose. Like I, I just it was just imitation, just trying to find out, uh, trying to imitate other pe- other heavy metal singers' screams, and then going which one felt like it wasn't tearing your throat up, and which suddenly went, "Hey, I could do that just by doing this." I can I can make it sound really good just by yeah. There's, there's, there's a few particular sort of um. Uh, people I took, um, I took sort of uh, pointers from, but mm-hmm. uh, just didn't mix that. And then, and then, you know, and then you sort of just start discovering, or being a little bit more open to other music, and you start figuring out stuff like that too, you know, so you realise that I can sound like the guy from you know, Motley Crue and going, yeah, 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 because you're such a boundary pusher, Mike, and you know I've, I can't I can't leave this hour without referring to um, our current PC state in the world. And you know, I mean, I remember you from I don't know if I can raise this at this time of day, but hey, what the heck? You know, you remember your cheap sex events that you ran um, with the former BFM <laughs> station manager Nick D'Angelo. I mean, what what do you think of our world these days? Have we just got way too precious and careful? Um. In some in some respects, yeah, but also you got to remember what it was, and you know, like I, I just once people start saying things like PC gone mad, I just ah, oh, just oh, you miserable old prick. <laughs> <laughs> just, you know, there's, there's, yeah, there's, there's a re- there's, there's a reason why you know it's it's happening, right? Yeah, um, I don't. Sometimes it's. It pushes, it pushes things and instead of balancing things out. It pushes them one way or the other, mm-hmm. or um, or just the 
the feedback or the, or the backswing is, is almost overcompensates, if that makes sense. Yes, yes. Um, but, 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 yeah, we've got to remember there's a reason for it all, you know? There's, reason, there's, yeah, there's a time when um, where people laughed at and teased or beat up gays, you know? Mm. There's a, and, and, and that was... That was that's horrible. Mm, <laughs> mm. Us, you, know, uh, you know, there's a, there's a time when, um, when, yeah, when women were just go, you get back to your, you get back to your knitting, love. You know, so that, that's, that's, that, there's a reason for it. You know, there, there was a time when, um, when we, people were just trying to shake off, you know, the the Maori culture in this country. Mm. Uh, so, so, yeah, so when it comes back, so it's come back with a bit of ferocity and, and a bit of passion mm. and a bit of... I hear you. Yeah, it, it, I hear you. And okay. I, and look, and the, pe- the people who... Um, yeah, I, I, I get how it, it can upset people and people like... Uh, New, Ze- New Zealand... Here's my problem with New Zealand at the moment, okay? And for the last couple of years, man, it's so full of people having a bitch and a complain about things. Yeah. And, and it's been so... It's been so sort of in there, oh well, blah blah blah. It's like, yeah, so happy to make a comment about something after the fact. Whereas, when at the, at the time when the people who are supposed to make those decisions about whatever it is <laughs> um, had to make them, those those people that are whinging and moaning about it, sort of at the tail end, the after after it all happens, they didn't have any. They didn't have any ideas. They didn't. They didn't volunteer themselves to. To sort of uh, to, to be innovators or to be to change things, or, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. It's, and it's just it's just constantly. It's like, hey, yeah, you, know, you can whinge and moan all you like, and, 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 and there's a lot of acting like, oh, well, I knew this was going to be the case. It's like, no, you didn't. <laughs> of course, no, we didn't. didn't. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's, 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 yeah, it's really, like a really, it's, it's a really something. That's, it's actually really bummed me out. Like, it's just watching, like, um, it's just this whole, you know. It, Everyone's, everyone's suddenly got a little bit too sort of, oh, what about everything for me? I want the stuff all for me. What about me? I just want to you know, I just want more than that other person. And that shouldn't be the case for anything in your life, really. Mm. No, I don't think. I think you make a yeah. re- I think you make a good point there, New Zealand. Stop complaining unless you can change it. <laughs> Just shut up. <laughs> yeah, you know, like new sorts of What a what a horrible little watch the society that's turned into. You know, it's like yeah, um, yeah. That, that, you know, there's just people who are so you know, oh, I've got that I've had five super prices in there for four years, Mike, and. Uh, you know, I've really been able to learn some stuff, you know, more than pretty much everyone else in the country. Like, you know, like, I'm, I'll, I'll bag one broadcaster. What about my costume? Please. <laughs> like, you know, you jump, you jump into Paul Holmes' spot from four parts of the way, and, you know, because you've been a capable um, understudy up to now, I guess. And then, but then suddenly you just turn to a guy who knows more than everybody else in the country every single day. Every single day, you, apparently, Mike Austin knows more than everyone else in the whole country. Always right. That's ridiculous. That can't even be, that can't even be true. <laughs> so what? Like, why do we tolerate that? Yeah, I hear, I hear you, and you know, I wish we could talk for ages, but we've got news waiting. But you know what? I'm, you're not a grumpy old man. The last thing you are is a grumpy old man. You're not a whinger. You're, you've, you know, you're just getting on with life and, and doing your thing, and that that's a that's a great thing to hear, Mike. And it's been it's been super fun. What we're going to do is we might play um, one of your longer push push songs next hour, just to you know familiarise listeners that um, you know this this EP is there. Without wanting to sound like John Key, I think that's what New Zealanders want. And I want to, I want to say a big shout out to my, my, one of my best friends who's down in Queenstown too, Greg Ewan. Nice. Uh, he's Greg. Right, I say Greg, 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 much in time on the radio. Yeah. Can you can you do a little? Um, oh, actually, you know what? One time I'll get you to do us a favour, and you can you can do a little. Um, listen to South Beat. Uh, this is Mikey Havoc. You know, do do us one of those sometime. But in the meantime, we've got to take some um, boring, probably negative, depressing, whingy news right now, Mike. But um, gosh, it's been good. I never like to be really awful. It's been well, such. So- huh? No, no. I'm a former news person. I know. But anyway, Mike, um, it has been great, and all the best. And let's let's catch up in the future on music. Let's talk again. Sure. Appreciate it. Have, have yeah. yourself a good day. We'll Bye. see you soon. Ciao. Bye. Bye.